not too long ago, I set out on a mission to platinum every single Batman Arkham game. And you guys seem to enjoy that. I, however, did not. Help! I'm about to lose my mind. So needless to say, after that godforsaken journey full of nothing but predator challenges, Riddler trophies, and constant agonizing misery, I decided to take a little break from the world of Batman and DC Comics. I couldn't even bring myself to play all the way through Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, and that game's basically a masterpiece. However, with all the controversy surrounding Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, it reminded me of another DC game that also failed to live up to expectations, Gotham Knights. In this video, I will be completing Gotham Knights in its entirety. Every main quest, every side quest, and every collectible it has to offer, unlocking that precious platinum trophy in the process. Was Gotham Knights really that bad? Was it truly a mediocre game? Or were we as fans simply overreacting? Now knowing how bad things could actually be, could Gotham Knights ironically be worth playing? Find out in this next installment to the the greatest to ever do it As much as I love Rocksteady's Arkham Trilogy, I feel the most underrated game in that universe is by far Arkham Origins, which was made by a different developer called WB Games Montreal. Montreal, Montreal, I don't know, man. There was something about that young, unhinged Batman that didn't know quite how to control his anger yet. Coupled with one of the most intriguing narratives of all four games, the birth of Batman and the Joker's relationship, and that sweet snowy Christmas theme that we all love in a Batman story, Arkham Origins is a game that every Batman fan has to experience at least once. I truly adore that game and I've been seeing a lot of you request a video on it and just know I'm cooking something up. Stay tuned. Anyways, WB Games Montreal ended up making Gotham Knights. So naturally, I was very, very excited for this game when it was announced because of how much I loved Arkham Origins. So with all of that being said, step one in this platinum journey is to simply play through the story. And this story takes place in a new universe, completely separate from Arkham. Things start off hot with Batman. Wait, I forgot the ad. This video is sponsored by Wanted Dead. 2023 was a pretty insane year for gaming, and we had a lot of incredible titles come out. But you probably missed one of the craziest games that came out in 2023. Wanted Dead. Wanted Dead is quite literally a love letter to the PS3, Xbox 360 generation of video games with eight to 10 hours of intense single player hack and slash action. Featuring a gun fu combat system that pretty much combines melee battles with a katana and a pistol with dynamic ranged combat. I love the vibe and setting of Wanted Dead. It has that 80s cyberpunk feel and presents a technologically primitive world frozen in the early 90s. It pretty much combines high-tech weaponry with a low-tech 90s retro setting. It's really dope. And Wanted Dead is also the perfect choice for challenging yourself in those gaming skills. All it takes is one mistake and it's game over. You're donezo. And we all know I love a good challenge. <laughs> Every level ends with a challenging boss fight each boss having a unique moveset that's going to require a unique strategy and approach to beat. Pair that with over 50 stylish finishing animations and a variety of insane mini games to play throughout, and you end up with an overall fun, madness-filled game. Wanted Dead is an extremely underrated title, recently being mentioned in Kotaku's Top 10 Games of 2023, Gaming Bolt's 15 Most Underrated Xbox Games of All Time 2023 edition, and was mentioned in VG247's Year of the B Game article. And the best part is you can experience Wanted Dead right now for a 50% discount. That's right, you can dive into the action pack slasher shooter for not 30, not 40, but 50% 
off. This deal is available on PC, Steam, and Epic Games Store, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X. Don't miss out, folks. Experience one of the most overlooked, underrated games of 2023 at an amazing discount. And once again, I want to thank Wanted Dead for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back into it. Things start off hot with Batman fighting Ra's al Ghul in the Batcave. And I gotta say, this was by far the best cutscene in the entire game. This fight was incredible. Also, I mess with this bat suit in this game heavy. Ooh! Oh, dude, that's just so hard. That suit is so hard. I don't care what anybody says. That suit's so hard. However, the fight doesn't end well for Bats, where he ends up blowing up the Bat Cave, sacrificing himself in order to take out Raish and save Gotham. And that is where the Bat family comes in. In the wake of Bruce's death, Nightwing, Batgirl, Robin, and Red Hood take over as the new protectors of Gotham. And right from the very beginning of the game, you have to pick which member of the family you want to play as. And my decision was quite easy. Pass. Pass. Oh, big pass. No, we, we, we don't do no P. Diddy around here. Smash. Bruce leaves the Knights a pre-recorded message that contains some leads for the case he was working on before he died. The Knights immediately begin following those leads, coming in contact with some familiar faces along the way, like Harley Quinn. But look at you. You're getting all skinny. You gotta eat. Wouldn't want you to lose them. Glitz. Talia Al Ghul. You know Bro, the only thing I can think of when I see Talia is that one scene in The Dark Knight Rises where she just dies. And the penguin. You assaulting reform. Colin Farrell better. Upon further investigation, the knights eventually learn of a secret society that supposedly has been ruling Gotham from the shadows for centuries. Some real Illuminati type shit. The Court of Owls. The Court of Owls concept is so underrated in Batman lore, and I really hope going forward we see them more often. Could you imagine the court in the Batman part two and part three would be cinema? And I have to say, the court was done extremely well in this game. They were pretty menacing, using this like watered down version of the Lazarus Pit to create creatures called Talons, who were coincidentally the most annoying enemies to fight in the game, but whatever. The whole plot of the story is basically the Gotham Knights get stuck in the middle of a war between the Court of Owls and the League of Shadows, led by Talia Al Ghul. Essentially, the League is going to burn Gotham to the ground just to eliminate the Court, and the Bat family is trying to take down the Court so that doesn't happen. It's actually a pretty intriguing story, and when the game game isn't trying to be quirky with cringy dialogue between the characters, it's actually pretty good. And no Batman to save it. I guess that's our job now. Yeah. It is. Oh, cringe. While dealing with the court in the league, the Gotham Knights also had a couple of other case files to tend to, which included some of Batman's biggest foes, like Mr. Freeze, Clayface, and once again, Mommy. On account of my being a brilliant psychiatrist. You will never be her. I quickly ran through the story in all the case files, enjoying myself for the most part. Gotham Knights gets a lot of hate, but the story itself is actually kind of underrated. The way the Court of Owls is presented here as if there's some type of antagonist from a horror movie was pure perfection. I eventually found myself at the end of the story, and if for some reason you're still trying to avoid spoilers at this point, I'd skip to this timestamp here. Basically, Talia brings Bruce back from the dead with the Lazarus Pit so he could lead the League of Assassins as they take over Gotham. She was manipulating the Knights the entire time and just wanted them to take out the court to make it easier. This bitch has always been for the streets, bro. However, Bruce inevitably breaks free of the brainwash, turning back into his old self again. And I got really excited here because I just knew this was how they were going to bring Bruce Wayne back. Like, hell yeah, bro. We're gonna bring him back from the dead with the Lazarus Pit, break him free of the brainwash, and then in the post game after the story, we'll be able to fly around Gotham is Batman. It's all hunky-dory, right? Well, 
much like the Dallas Cowboys organization, I was left with nothing but disappointment. Bruce ends up sacrificing himself by destroying the Lazarus pit with the Batwing, causing both the league and the court to run back into hiding. So they basically had the perfect opportunity to bring Bruce back, setting the stage for DLC or maybe even future Batman games that take place in this timeline instead of Arkham, but instead they decided to kill him off again. I don't know, man. I'm really not crazy about the way this story ended. I think as a whole, it was pretty good and it was worth playing through, but I would have much rather seen Bruce either stay dead or bring him back permanently via the Lazarus pit. It was a very strange creative decision, and I understand killing him off for the purpose of this game's narrative because this is supposed to be about the Bat family and not Bruce for once, but you brought him back anyway. So at that point, it's still about Bruce in the end, so you might as well leave him alive and keep that door open for future stories. But what do I know? I'm just a nerd. Playing through the game and all of the case files earned me a ton of story related trophies as well as trophies for completing challenges and unlocking abilities. My next step in the process of earning the Gotham Knights Platinum was to complete all of the training exercises. You would think I'd do this at the beginning of the game, but to be honest, I was so uninterested in everything with this game outside of the story. I kind of just focused on the story itself and did absolutely nothing else up to this point. Something that really bit me in the ass later on, but we'll get to that in a little bit. I was expected. That's murder. Let's go. Good. Yay! Complete Protector of Gotham. Complete 50 challenges. I wasn't even trying to get that. I was just doing the training. Physical and mental preparation. This is literally the best part of the game, dude. <laughs> Wait, what was that? Less. Practice makes perfect. Oh, that was for the training exercises. Okay, okay, okay. All right, we're moving and grooving. From there, my main focus was on completing crimes. Throughout Gotham City, there are a variety, and I say variety lightly, of crimes that you need to stop. You have opportunistic crimes and premeditated crimes. Opportunistic crimes are short, simple crimes, usually just involving a couple of enemies and minimal rewards. But premeditated crimes are longer, involve a ton of enemies and in turn result in much bigger rewards. As you defeat enemies throughout Gotham, you'll earn clues, which in turn reveal more premeditated crimes across the map. And as I completed the crimes, I had several trophies that I needed to focus on. The first one for stopping every premeditated crime in one night. To do this, I had to max out my clue bar, which would reveal the max number of premeditated crimes on the map which typically would be about nine or 10 crimes. Secondly, I needed to complete all of those crimes successfully without failing one of them. If I were to fail, I would have to start over on the following night. So needless to say, I wasn't a huge fan of this one. Run. Belfry, I need to get this dropped off now. I've contacted Dr. Tompkins. She'll meet you at a drop site. I don't even want to play anymore. There is no way. You cannot make it up. You cannot make it up. There is no way. Do not have to start all the way over. I have to start all the way over. That's hilarious, man. That's absolutely repulsive. That's the last one. So I've literally spent the last however long getting all the clues to do this. And now I'm just going to have to start all over. Whatever. I'm going to play... Mario Kart. What? I don't understand this game. I don't understand any of the trophies that are popping right now. They're all popping at like the most random times. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just playing. <laughs> I don't know. God, just go away. They just never die. They never die! Dude, how do you go from Arkham to this? I just don't understand. All right. Woo. Come on, big boy. 
Ah, ah, okay, okay. Chill, 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 chill. Chill. Come on. Huh? Stay okay. Down. Ah. All right. Yo, pause. <laughs> oh, wait, we, okay, we got it, we got it, we got it. Now we just gotta defeat the enemies. All right, got him. Three more, it looks like. Got him. Think they one hurt. more, all right. One more enemy and that's it. This is it. This is it. God, I hope that was it. All right. Yep, there it is. It. Not on my watch. Okay. That was kind of an annoying trophy because we ran into a couple of hiccups, as you guys saw. <laughs> the next goal I had was probably the most stressful, challenging part of the Platinum. In Gotham Knights, you have enemy factions, much like other games. You have the Regulators, the Freaks, the League of Shadows, the Mob, Man Bats, and of course, the Court of Owls. And there were seven different trophies I needed for defeating a specific amount of enemies of each faction. For example, 30 Mob Godmothers or 10 Man Bats or 45 League of Shadows Assassins. The problem with these trophies is that there's literally no way to track how many of these enemies you've defeated. You could try to keep count, but you've been fighting some of these enemies since the beginning of the game. So at this point, that's pretty pointless. You've probably lost count anyway. Not to mention, running into some of these enemies could be a little bit harder to do than others. I swear, I spent a lot of time gliding around on this stupid Fortnite glider, just hoping and praying I run into a freaking man bat. Is that what I think it is? Oh my god, it's a man bat! Oh my god. This is almost as rare as Jason Tatum showing up in the clutch. Ugly motherfucker. But regardless of my frustrations, I started completing crime after crime, focusing on the specific enemies I needed to beat in the process. Oh, shot till they drop. What was that for? 45 regulator shockers. Okay. Yep. Drone you out. I was waiting on that one. That 30 regulator I'm drone masters. All righty. Gotta be it, dude. This has to be it. This has to be it. Come on. This has to be it. That's it. Bulldoze. That's it. Oh. Wait, no. Give me a look. No. That's one more faction trophy down. Thank God. I miss Red Dead. There it is, out of their league. Defeat 45 League of Shadows assassins and 30 Rocketeers. What a lame name, Rocketeer. At this point, I had completed a lot of crimes, and it felt like I defeated more than enough of the remaining enemy types. Yet, there were still no trophies popping for them, which was really freaking me out because as I said previously, there's no way to track any of these enemies. And I was getting really concerned that the trophy, or God forbid, multiple trophies were glitched. Come on. Look there, it's Nightwing. Oh, <laughs> I'm never going to get it, man. But all I could do was continue fighting enemy after enemy and completing repetitive crime after repetitive crime, hoping and praying the trophy would pop soon. Dude. Admit it. How many are there? Come on. Please, 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 please. There it is, family meeting. Dude, I thought it was glitched. I was going to freak out if I had to start over. It feels like I have killed a hundred of those, man. Oh, Big Bertha, done. All right. Potentially the last man bat, maybe? Okay. All right, big bye. All right, big guy. All right, all right, all right. These dudes are so tanky. All right. Getting close. Yes. Yes. This was fun. man bat family. Oh, thank God, brother. I've been searching for those things forever, man. It's so RNG. They're like incredibly rare. You can barely ever find them. So now all I have is the court of owls uh, enemies. I really feel like this one's going to be fairly grindy. I don't know how many of these I actually have, but hopefully not a whole lot. Please be it, dude. Please. Please. I can't take it anymore. I can't do any more crime. Oh my god, there it is. There it is. <laughs> it's actually it. It's actually over. Okay. Oh, thank god. 
The final crime-related trophy awaiting me was for stopping 250 crimes in Gotham. And this one almost killed me. But not because it was difficult. It wasn't like an Arkham City Predator Challenge or an Arkham Knight Batmobile race. It almost killed me because of how boring it was. The 250 crimes sounds like a lot, and it was. But both opportunistic crimes and premeditated crimes counted towards the 250. So I could just do the short and sweet opportunistic crimes, which are the little white triangles on the map, and call it a day. But oh my god, man, it is literally the same thing over and over and over again. Drop in, find two or three enemies trying to carjack somebody or do a weapons deal or something, beat up the bad guys, and bam, you're done. Just do that 250 times. You know what I just you realized, just guys? This game is basically Marvel's Spider-Man, except it's not fun. As I approached the 250, I was getting more and more anxious. My brain was in such hibernation mode as I completed these crimes, I didn't know if I had 100 left or 5 left. It could have been anywhere in between. <laughs> Oh, there's no way we're not close, right? I hate not knowing my progress. It's the worst. Three hours later. Oh my God, we got it. Oh my God, we got it. My brain has been shut off for like the last four hours. I'm not gonna lie. Oh my God, it's finally over. That was literally like the most unbearably boring experience I have ever ever done in a video game, bro. And I platinumed Assassin's Creed Valhalla. This might be the greatest video game ever made. Hey, I think once I craft this right here, we should get a trophy, I believe. Yes, there it is. Dress to impress. Craft a complete set of legendary equipment. Fat W, boys, fat W. We gotta be getting close, dude. I've been doing... I don't even know what I'm doing. There it is. Fusion expert. Require 50 mod chips via mod fusion. Whatever that means, brother. Whatever that means. All right. I've actually haven't gotten the simplest trophy in the game yet, which is for playing as each character. So I should get it here. Yeah. <laughs> the Batman family, dude. I only played as Nightwing the entire time. I can't lie. I played as Nightwing for the plot, bro. Next there were a couple different side activities I had to complete and a few types of collectibles I had to grab. I started with Bat Cycle Trials. These were just timed races on the Bat Cycle, very similar to the Batmobile races in Arkham Knight. And I got through these with ease. Oh my God, I'm not gonna get it. I'm not gonna get it, 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 I'm not gonna get it. Please, 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 please. Please, please, please. <gasps> get it next time. <gasps> Dude, this is the worst game I've ever played. We should be good now. We should be good. <gasps> Damn it. I just want to play Red Dead Redemption. That's it, that's it, that's it. We did it, we did it, we did it, we did it, we did it. That out of hell. All the time trials are done. What a blast that was. All right, for this next trophy, I have to go like plant this evidence or something to protect Batman's identity or, I don't know, man. It's for a trophy, so we're gonna go ahead and nod this out. And if I fail and anybody sees me, I have to come back like the next night. Like I, I pretty much failed it. So I gotta try really hard not to get spotted here or go through these little lasers. All right, so we'll turn this off. What is going on? Ah, wait, 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 wait. I don't like this at all, brother. So much for being stinky. No matter, we'll just have to return another night. What? I don't understand, bro. Okay. Oh, okay, I see, I see, I see. And then it comes back on. All right. All right, I'm in there. I'm in there. Wow, that was just laughably easy, brother. Solid alibi. All right, successfully protect Batman's secret identity. Some of this side stuff is just 
painfully easy, man. It like almost feels as if it's only there just to give you something to do. Like it's very Assassin's Creed Valhalla-ish in that regard. I don't know, man. I'm not trying to sound like a hater. I just miss the Arkham game so much, man. Now, on to collectibles. There are five separate types of collectibles in Gotham Knights. Gotham City street art, Batarangs, Historia Strigaday pages, whatever that means, landmarks, and secret caches. Bro, this game literally is trying to be Spider-Man. The map even has the same exact icon for the secret caches and as landmarks, bro. Over 150 collectibles total. I had my work cut out for me on this one. So I locked in, definitely didn't pull up the Batman Arkham videos collectible guide, and and got to work. Hmm. Gotham City Confidential? I thought there was like way more of those. Oh shit, what? Did I already do a lot of them? I don't know, man. Whatever, we got it. That's all that matters. We got it, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I found the last mural. There's like 12 of these, one, pretty much one in each district of Gotham. You just have to scan them for like Robin's art project or something like that. So we should get a trophy here. Claiming the mural high ground mural, mural, mural. I don't know. Discover all the murals for Tim's Gotham City street art project. Most of these collectibles are pretty easy. The only one that kind of intimidates me is the Batarangs, which unfortunately are coming up soon. All right, so this collectible was a little bit tricky. I had to collect all like these missing pages for this like historical thing. It's something to do with the Court of Owls. I don't know, but it should be so. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So once I pick this up, that should be it for this collectible. There it is. Read owl about it. <laughs> Punny. Get it? Because Court of Owl. I'm dead inside. You know, I actually kind of like this Gotham City. I think people were a little harsh on it. I mean, dude, look at that. It's a pretty dope Gotham. I could definitely give quite the chilling monologue up here. Three weeks of nights have turned me into a nocturnal animal. I am so sorry. You'll never live up to bed. What did you just say to me, you little pussy? Yeah, you better run. So here we are at the last landmark. You have to like find a bunch of historical landmarks around Gotham. Uh, couldn't imagine where they got that idea from. But here we go, let's get the trophy. There were 40 of these, so it was a little grind. History Major. Locate all landmarks of Gotham City. And with that, that leaves just one more collectible for us to get out of the way before moving on to New Game Plus, and that is Batarangs. <gasps> there she is. There she is, ladies and gentlemen. The final Batarang. Oh, thank God, brother. There was only like 60 of these, so like, I've been through the Riddler grind. Like, there's nothing that could hurt me at this point. But this was kind of annoying. This is it. There it is. Batarang Collector. Retrieve every hidden Batarang in Gotham City. The most annoying part about that is there's really no way to track them or like, have them pop up on your map or anything. Like, you know, in the Arkham games, you could do the Riddler informants and you could get some information on your map and so you know where the trophies are. But with this one, there's really no way to track it at all. Just like pretty much every other side activity I've done this far. But we are about done, folks. All there's left to do is to hop in the New Game Plus so we can unlock the last two trophies. But before New Game Plus, it was time to do the two DLCs, the Kelvin Incident and Heroic Assault. The first step to beating the DLC is... Yeah, dude, I'm sorry. I'm not doing that shit. In my defense, I did ask you guys if it was even worth going through the DLC. And the answer to that question was overwhelmingly no. Apparently the DLC for Gotham Knights is just this like grindy raid-like mode where it's just fighting waves of enemies and boss fights that you already did in your initial playthrough. The platinum up to this point was mostly pretty repetitive and boring, so I didn't even bother doing a repetitive and boring DLC. I'm sorry. Sue me. So instead, I went ahead and started my New Game Plus run, where all I had left to do was unlock all knighthood abilities and reach max level 40. All right, so we just started New Game Plus and we're already about to unlock one of the two trophies that we have left, and it is just for getting all of the knighthood abilities, which I could have done in the first playthrough, but I kind of used all my abilities on other stuff on accident, but L streamer. All right, let's get it. Boom, a worthy successor. All knighthood abilities for any member of the Bat family. So the only trophy we have left is for hitting max level 40. Right now we're at level 30, so I really don't know how long this is gonna take. We might have to play through the majority of the game. I really don't know what the XP is, how much you get for each mission, I don't know. But yeah, let's get to work.
Oh my god, there it is. 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 Platinum. Oh. oh. Air to the cow. Oof, brother. Dude, that was. Oh, that was honestly kind of an unexpected grind. It was a little bit more than I anticipated, but. We got it done nonetheless. Honestly, now that I've been playing back through the game on New Game Plus, I feel like this game's story is low-key kind of underrated. It's actually pretty good. It's just everything else that's not very good. But W, uh, that was platinum number 21, I believe. And my platinum trophy hunting rookie year is officially over. We're a sophomore now. At the end of the day, Gotham Knights as a whole is not a bad game. It's just not a good one. Is it as bad as Suicide Squad? Hell no. The story itself was pretty solid and definitely worth playing through, at least until the final act. The Court of Owls and League of Shadows, plus all the other case files, make the story somewhat intriguing. And anybody that's a fan of Batman and DC Comics can find something to appreciate here. It's just everything outside of the main story that's just not great. Gotham Knights is basically like the McDonald's of DC games. Like, you know this shit is garbage and it's not good for you, but like, I also want a hot and spicy McChicken too. I don't know, man. I just, I can't really comprehend what DC and WB's problem is with making decent video games. I mean, you literally produced four of the greatest video games ever made with the Arkham series, and you made Injustice, which in my opinion were two really good fighting games. Like, why all of a sudden are you having such a hard time making good games? Marvel is cooking you guys right now, but I do have high hopes for the future anyway. Kinda. There's that Wonder Woman game coming, and as long as they don't find a way to give that one a battle pass, we'll probably be okay as DC fans. I don't know though, it is Warner Brothers. In conclusion, Gotham Knights at its core is a decent video game if you don't stray too far away from the main story content, but this Platinum, not worth it. Be sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe if you're brand new. I do wanna thank you guys for getting the channel to 200,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane. And I did promise that I would platinum one Souls game every 100,000 subscribers. So that does mean the next game after Red Dead Redemption 2 will be Bloodborne. So be sure to turn those post notices on to stay updated on that. I'll be doing the whole thing live here on YouTube. Be sure to follow all my socials you see on the screen right now and in the description below. And once again, I want to thank Wanted Dead for sponsoring this video and keeping me financially afloat. That Platinum was pretty boring and easy, but if you wanna see me do something that was absolutely insane and extremely hard, be sure to click here.